We are in an exhibit called The Fabric of Life Drawn from Nature. It's an exhibit of patterns that I have uh, been working on for decades. I've dreamt of this moment for a long time and it finally came, but I've been drawing these patterns. Just a lot, a lot, a lot of busy stuff. And I uh, always wanted to have a, a line of fabrics and glamorous shirts. So here I am. The process is starting out with a pen and ink line drawing and uh, starting with pencil, then inking it. And uh, usually what I do is I set up an idea, I have a concept, and so I sit down, I basically teach myself through the act of drawing what something looks like. But then after that, it's scanning the drawing, cleaning it up, and then I handed it off to Grace Freeman. So Grace is really essential in this whole process because I'm an analog guy, I'm an old guy. <laughs> and uh, so pen and ink and paper and that kind of thing, but it was important to then take it into a digital process. So Grace helped, she scanned them, she, we went through the color designs, uh, the color palette went back and forth with that. And I asked Grace to actually do all the digital coloring, to color 121 dinosaurs. And they're all in that drawing, uh, all in that pattern over there. I've been drawing pictures my entire, entire life. I, I, uh, my first love in life was dinosaurs. There's a dinosaur pattern over here. So I'm inspired by natural history. And what, um, where this whole thing started was I started with this one design. That was the end papers for a book. And I really enjoyed doing it. And then what happened is it turned into an exhibit. The book turned into an exhibit. I had this pattern that was for these end papers. And in the exhibit, this is down at the California Academy of Sciences, they took that pattern, they made uh, curtains out of it and bed sheets. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. And I began to think, you know, that's the way to kind of, you know, get into some of these, uh, just kind of the psychedelic patterns and also to have drawings that had a little bit more behind them. So things like, you know, it's science inspired. So the one drawing, and I, what I wanted to actually see in that drawing was how, literally see how life evolved. So with each line in this drawing, the fabric of life, the first one was just single celled life. So as it evolves, you see a little fish that kind of shows up and then the next line down, you're later in time and the fish now has like fingers. And, <laughs> It's crawling ashore, so it was science-driven. So with each one, I began to you know, think, what if I was to do a drawing that had the beginning of life right in the center of it? Instead of each line, it sort of burst out from there, and it grows and tumbles out. So this one is Paleozoic Paisley, uh, Paleo Paisley. This is Fabric of Life over here. Those are dinosaurs, there's ammonites behind you, there's birds over here. There's plankton, zooplankton, there's all kinds of stuff, but all inspired by the natural world. I want them to work as a, a pattern right away, just the color, and um, so the, the design work speaks to them. So as you're looking at these pieces of artwork, um, you just see fabric, but there's more to it, you know, than this is kind of a pedantic patterns, you know, patterns that actually tell you something, so that if, as you look at the patterns, you might be intrigued by well, what's going on in here, but uh, you might also just enjoy the variety of stuff that's within it, but hopefully, you know, I've written up descriptions of these. These all have stories behind them, but they have to just work as a piece of visual art, as a piece of uh, fabric too. But, um, you know, so these are informed by science and not totally dictated by science, you know, so. They have to work as art. They have to work as fashion. <laughs> so what we do have here in the exhibit is we have the original drawings. Uh, there are seven original drawings, m most of them done uh, in the last couple of years. So they are framed up on the wall, starboard frames here. Uh, in Ketchikan did them. Uh, Brandon Hoyt did a beautiful job of those. So they are the original drawings on the wall and then uh, so after they were scanned and all that, they are uh, being displayed with 
the digital outputs from the actual drawings. So the original uh, of this one behind me, the Paleozoic Paisley, the, the original drawing is right there. That was a drawing that I thought would take me, uh, oh, maybe a month or so to do, you know, just because it was big black forms, dark, large black forms. And I was uh, seriously uh, off in that, uh, <laughs> that assessment to, because it took me a very long time to draw it. And then uh, to clean it all up, I had to go back in with a little bit of white paint, touch all that up. And then once I scanned it, I realized all the edges were pixelated. It went on and on and on. And then after that, I turned it over to Grace and she made it into a repeat. But then we found out that there was a border that was showing. So there was a whole process. The edge of the drawing was showing. So we had to, she, scanned it, gave it back to me, and there were these little gaps that I had to fill, so I had to draw once again. So there's a, an enormous amount of work just in doing the drawings themselves and then the process. But it was really that collaboration between Grace and I. Right now, you go to spoonflower.com, and uh, they are in uh, North Carolina, and they, are, they have these massive presses that uh, print bolts of fabric and you can actually print them on different types of fabric. Uh, canvas, you can even upholster your couch with these things if you like. You can make a boat sail you know, out of it. Uh, but uh, this is one uh, uh, level of fabric here. It's sort of a heavier cotton. So there's all kinds of surfaces you can have them printed on. You can actually have them manufacture the pillows for you, mail them to you. They could do some banners, but they're not doing button-up shirts. So these right now, order the fabrics and have your friend make, you know, a shirt for you. Johanna Collins uh, made this trilobite shirt and the uh, Alaska Life shirt that's over there. And she also made this uh, Sea Star shirt for Grace Freeman over here. So Grace got to have this very graceful purple shirt. And that's not really in my comfort zone, you know, so much, but I gotta, you know, pander a little bit to the audience, so. But, uh, I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to uh, just get to this other level of, uh, you know, clothing. And t-shirts, you know, they're kind of the every man's, you know, every person can wear t-shirts here and there, but you don't really wear them to these, you know, dress up functions. So I speak at a lot of science meetings and, that kind of thing, and there's always the banquet, and like you can't wear the t-shirt to the banquet, you'll be judged. And a lot of nerdy scientist types, like you're just not, and there's a certain type that just will never wear a t-shirt. There's a lot of people in the world just don't wear t-shirts, you know. After doing the plankton pattern and studying up on plankton, I reached out to a couple of local marine biologists, oceanographers, Gary Freitag and uh, Barbara Morgan, to advise me to come in and share their knowledge with me and I get they loan me all kinds of books. So these are drawings, as I said, that I'm teaching myself about these things, but I wanted Gary and Barbara to tell me more about the local Alaskan species of plankton. And I find out really cool, fascinating things about them that, you know, every other breath I take here today, it's coming from the ocean basically the phytoplankton and the seaweed in the ocean is producing that oxygen. That is so cool. Behind you right now, there is a uh, big banner of uh, ammonites, cephalopods, extraordinary cephalopods, the kin to the squid and octopus. But they're just beautiful spiral shapes. Um, and they went extinct with the non-avian dinosaurs 66 million years ago when the asteroid hit the planet. And killed virtually everything on the planet. This pattern here has got two cheeseburgers in it, by the way. Actually, they repeat, so there's multiple cheeseburgers now. Uh, that's the goofy element, but this actually shows life evolving, bursting out from the center right there. So I started with a single cell life right there, at one single cell, and then it radiates from there. And but what I did when I did the drawing, the concept behind it was that I want to draw things from the Paleozoic. What is that? The Paleozoic is 
the period of time when complex life at the beginning of the Paleozoic really starts taking off. So we have the Cambrian explosion is what it's called. So it starts out kind of in the Cambrian, this sort of very simple life before that. But then as we hit the Cambrian, things just really explode. And I want to have that idea of life bursting force on the planet. But I wanted to have the edge of the paper when I drew this be the end of the Paleozoic. So my rules that I given myself were, well, I'll just keep going. I'll start with a single cell. I'm gonna go out to the edge of the paper and everything's gonna happen. Whatever, each day I'll go in, there'll be another little thing that happens in there. It's gonna crawl out. It's gonna burst out. It's gonna, but at the very edge of the paper, that was gonna be the end of the Paleozoic. It was the Permian extinction. And that's the very first time that complex life hit a huge, extraordinary mass extinction at the end of the Permian. And it was basically a huge reset in the planet. It was like 90% or more of the planet's life. Everything, boom, total reset, because the volcanoes blew at least for 100,000 years, maybe even longer than that. And they just kept going. Huge sections of the world just burst, you know, so. Consequently, there are very few things that survived from the Paleozoic that pretty much have the same body shape, but things like jellyfish, things like cockroaches, things like ratfish, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, horse, uh, horsetail plants, uh, ferns, those you can recognize. Dragonflies, they lived in the Paleozoic. Other stuff, and they look pretty much the same. But other stuff in this pattern looks like, what is that? It's so completely alien to us. So it's sort of like this previous world but that's what's behind that. I think what I've found that my role has been uh, with my art is to help foster fascination for the natural world and to cultivate creativity wherever I can. I want to see it passed on. I think when you foster fascination, um, you know, there was this design. And when I go, did you know that? Or look at this, and this color really, worked. you know, that's, look at this, you know. But if you're inspired and you're fascinated and you're having fun, um, you're not fighting. You're not, <laughs> you're not uh, making war, you know. I guess when I look to the future, I hope that that creative spirit uh, that we had here in this town, well, in this town for thousands of years, because there's been humans on this coast for a long time, but uh, you know that that uh, fascination with the natural world, you know, continues. And here in Alaska, you're so much closer to the natural world, and we're so much more in touch with it, and it surrounds us. Uh, you know, forest on one side, the ocean on the other, and this great culture that's been here for thousands of years. It's truly an inspiring, awesome place. So I think that'll keep going on.